What's up guys? We are back with another Super 7 Ultimates Power Rangers review, taking a look at the other Ranger in this wave. So we got Green Ranger, and we are also getting our Mighty Morphin Yellow Ranger. Now, this comes in a standard style Ultimates box, so it's a it's a more normal size and shape too. You got your trapezoidal design, you got your slip cover with the Sabertooth Power Coin, the Lightning Burst, and then the vintage classic logo on the back. Pop that slip cover off, and we've got our Yellow Ranger there in the package, in the big window. Classic logo, very 90s inspired design with the lightning bolts. It very much calls back to the Bandai packaging of my youth. And then on the back, you've got a shot of Trini, as well as a sort of bio card for our Yellow Ranger here. So let's do it. Let's pull her out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Super 7 Ultimate's Yellow Ranger. You know, when it comes to Super 7 stuff, they never really want to give us the core team right out the gate, so I'm glad that they decided to give us a female ranger alongside a male ranger just to kind of get the team going so that it doesn't take like 10 waves to get them out here. So we've got our first female ranger in the wave, in the line, and there aren't a lot of female ultimates in general. I mean, what, April O'Neil, Pumira, Chitara, stuff like that. This is, in many ways, like I've mentioned with the Green Ranger and of course the Putty, one of the best articulated figures in Ultimates in general. There is a lot going on with this figure that I would love to see across the board when it comes to construction. And there's also changes in terms of how the females are constructed versus the male Ranger. So uh, let's see what she can do, see how she moves around. She's very similar to Tommy, uh, the Green Ranger. You've got a head that can look up slightly, look down pretty good, no tilt on these. You've got full rotation. Arms out at the shoulders. These are not removable arms because they're not the same torso as the males. They rotate, you've got your bicep swivel, single jointed, slightly better than 90 degrees elbows. You've got rotation, you've got hinges at the wrist, all that good stuff. What I really like about this figure though, is the torso and what I really want to see with this figure going forward is more of this. I want this to be incorporated where possible, of course, with other figures. I mean, I would love for them to go back and do Chitara, Pumira, April, all of them like this really, but she has a working, diaphragm cut. And I mean, this is probably an example of one of the best ranges for a torso in Ultimates in general. I mean, that tilt is is pretty nuts. Really good backwards. Not so much forward, though, but she has a ball peg waist that allows her to go even more forward. And it also has some tilt. It's also a good swivel point. So that alone is just a huge, huge increase in what we're used to seeing with Ultimates. I mean, I know, I know it's not going to beat a lot of other lines, but when you compare to older figures, and older female figures in particular, it's a night and day difference. The legs go out pretty much all the way. You're going to have some, some trouble with the, well, her left leg, your right, because of the holster. They go forward pretty much all the way. They go backwards. You've got your thigh cut up there. We've got our single jointed knees, 90 degrees there. You've got a boot cut down here, hidden really well because of the boot. And then you've got a really nice rocker and hinge down here also. So, I mean, I'm really happy with the way the Rangers are articulated. You know, like I said with the Green Ranger, it's still not exactly what I want to see for a Power Ranger because of course they should be some of the most dynamic things you've got on your shelf really. But when you compare this to any other Ultimates, they are making strides in the right direction. I'm really happy to see what they've done because this is Power Rangers to make them as articulated as possible. Uh, these arms, these legs having as deep cuts as they can get but these torsos, I mean, this is where it's at. I need to see more of this when it comes to Ultimates. Now, as far as the overall look and feel here, I think for the most part, we've got a pretty solid example of a Ranger. Like I said with the Tommy figure, it's a really solid figure. It may not be the standout of the wave, but I think they're doing a pretty solid job when it comes to actually making Rangers in this scale, you know, in this format. And I think some of the things that they've done in terms of articulation by making these cuts a little bit more mindful and functional has led to a better looking figure as a result. You know, that diaphragm cut is in the right spot for a female and it also works. The proportions look really good. The sizing is really good. It is a shorter, slightly shorter figure than the male body and we'll do a comparison here shortly. So I do like that as well. Color is really, really consistent throughout. Very clean, very crisp. The, the yellows, the whites, especially on the gloves and the boots, I'm really happy with that. The diamond patterning looks great. I do have some unfortunate scuffing on the back here. I'm not really sure how that would have occurred. And there is some paint scuffing occurring as I tilt the head up, so watch out for that. But otherwise, it's a really, really nice looking figure. The paint is super, super consistent all throughout. 
very much matches what is and isn't molded. The belt looks good. The holster is nice and bright. The line work on it is pretty clean. The morpher is also really nicely done. You know, you get, you get close enough in there and you can see, you know, like the visage of a saber tooth tiger in there. It's really small, but it's there. And then we've got our head sculpt, which, you know, it's going to blow the lightning collection away, I think, in terms of the sharpness of details. And we'll do a comparison uh, between the two. But I think this is all around a much nicer looking Yellow Ranger than I've had in my collection since, well, since getting the figure arts like a decade ago. So this helmet looks great. The black is super glossy. The silver is nice and metallic and vibrant. And those details uh, do come out. It very much looks like a saber tooth tiger. So I'm really happy with the way this looks. Again, I don't know that the Rangers are going to be the standout for anybody because it's hard to top Goldar. It's hard to top that T-Rex for me. But I do think they are pumping out some really good looking Rangers that very much kind of test the limits of what Ultimates were originally meant to do. Now, as far as some size comparisons go, we got to start with Ultimates. So here is the Green Ranger and Leo. And Leo is, of course, shorter and a little bit stockier, as is the case for the Turtles. I think the big comparison is, of course, Ranger to Ranger. And Tommy is larger. They don't have the same parts. It's not 100% parts sharing between the females and the males. I think this is a pretty good indicator, like back to back, though, is maybe a better way to do this, to let you see exactly what they look like uh, back to back. And you can see that Tommy is... It's maybe like a quarter to a third of a head taller. It's not a huge difference. And then the proportions are slightly different uh, as a result. So I do like that. They should not be carbon copies of themselves for the male to female comparison. Let's move Leo aside. Here is a, here's a Marvel legend. So this is the US agent figure and he is, I mean, he's not a Bucky cap, but he's a normal-ish Marvel legend. So you can see he scales up pretty nicely with our Yellow Ranger. And then let's move Tommy aside and here, is a Mythic Legions figure, one of the Deluxe Legion builders, and he is all around bulkier and slightly taller. I think a lot of that is due to that helmet. Let's throw another Ultimates in there. Here is Optimus Prime, just for something much, much bigger. And then let's take all of this away, and we will talk about the Lightning Collection. Move this slightly over, and here is our Lightning Collection Yellow Ranger. And this is a huge, huge difference for me. And honestly, now that I see this next to it, this, I haven't messed around with the older Lightning Collection MMPR figures in quite a while. They haven't been put out on display for quite some time. This is a gangly looking Yellow Ranger. I think, I think our Ultimates is far better proportioned. It's mostly the arms that just look really weird on the Lightning Collection. And I think the colors are a little bit more consistent throughout our Ultimates. Of course, you know, it is a much, much larger figure in a very different scale, so they aren't necessarily going to be able to replace each other on your shelf, depending on what you collect. But I dare I say that this is a better representation of our Yellow Ranger than Hasbro's offering. Now, as far as accessories goes, the name of the game here, kind of like I expect it's going to be for all the Rangers, is accessories. There's a lot of stuff here just from, you know, options parts, as well as more of that deep cut kind of stuff. Now, to start with, we do get some extra head sculpts. Uh, just like with the Tommy figure, we get two, although, of course, the Yellow Ranger was two characters, so we are getting a Trini head and an Aisha head. And I think for the most part, both of them are okay. I think the Trini head is probably the best example of what we've gotten so far, but both of them suffer for me in the same area as the Tommy heads. They're too cartoony. There's nothing realistic about these. And I think the Aisha head suffers a little bit more. I don't know that the likeness is as there, but I think the Trini likeness is, is pretty, pretty close. It's not perfect, uh, but it's probably the better of the two for, for my, my taste. We get a bunch of hands with her, and we get laterally hinged gripping hands on her in the box. You get a set of vertically hinged gripping hands. You get a set of these Tiger Claw fighting pose hands. We get a set of fists. And then you get a set of open palm hands. You get this a singular sort of cupping style hand. And then you get this singular uh, fighting style pose hand also. We, of course, get a bunch of weapons. So she gets her two daggers. These look really good. Really happy with the size. Really happy with the color on them. That metallic definitely pops. A lot of little sculpted detail on these, of course, because they are relatively small weapons. We get a bunch of blade blasters, which I'm really happy with. We get the holstered version. And the sculpt and the paint on these is terrific. There's a lot of little detail on these. You get the gun mode. And you get the, the blade mode, so the blade blaster mode. So you get all three. There's no missed versions here. 
We, of course, just like with Tommy, we get a morpher that is in use. So this is open and the yellow energy is pouring out. And you can sort of see the, you know, the hint of the saber tooth there. It's minor. The sculpt on that coin is really, really small, uh, but it is there. We get some toy stuff. So you get a toy blade blaster, just like when the vintage Bandai line, so just white. You get a set of vintage Bandai daggers, so just metallic silver, of course. We get her power crystal, which I really like these. I don't know what I'm ever going to do with it, but I like the idea of getting these. It's one of those more signature things that you normally don't see. And the coin is on top of there, and it's, it's sculpted pretty well. You can sort of make it out. And then we get a couple of deep cut kind of accessories that are very much themed to the Yellow Ranger. Uh, so we get the Deandra flowers. These are from the Shell Shock episode. So it's just a, it's just a you know a bouquet of flowers. Well, not even a bouquet, just a, a sprig of flowers, really. And then my favorite accessory, and one that I mean I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's probably just going to stand on a shelf. But we get Trini's favorite doll. We get the Mis Mr. Tickle Sneezer. This is one of those just most ridiculous episodes, and it's one of the weird ones that if you, you know, pay close attention in the Power Rangers footage, there is an actual Japanese kid in the monster battle that they just couldn't manage to edit out. So there's just like a little bit of, uh, of footage from Sentai still in there that wasn't supposed to make the cut. I always want someone to make that kid into a figure one day just because, but we do get probably the closest we're going to get to Mr. Tickle Sneezer anytime soon with this thing, and it's it's sculpted really well. Tons of paint on this thing, too. Like, there's a lot of detail on this little guy. So Trini can have her, her favorite her favorite doll and have a little buddy on the shelf. And, you know, I always say it, figures with buddies are instantly cooler. So there is a lot of stuff here. I think, again, you know, the heads are going to be the, the point that people zero in on with these because they're okay. They're better here, I think. But they're still not great. There is some room to improve. It's just they're a little too cartoony for me. And then otherwise, she does come with a lot of stuff. There's very specific Trini Yellow Ranger things just pouring out of this box. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this figure. Again, a lot of that comes down to articulation and construction, because I've been saying it for a while now. We need a better and more useful torso articulation and waist articulation in the Ultimates line when it comes to actually giving characters diaphragm cuts. And this is a really good instance of that. It's a fully functional diaphragm cut. Rotation, tilt, the whole shebang with a ball peg waist. It's what I've wanted for quite some time. I think she looks really good. Sizing is nice. I'm glad that she's not the same size as the male Rangers. Comes with a really, really solid array of accessories. Maybe the only real downside for me in particular is the, the civilian heads, the unhelmeted heads. They, they still kind of miss the mark, just like Tommy's did, although I think they are a little bit better. The Trini head in particular, I do really like. The Aisha one does have some issues. But overall, this is a really solid example of Super 7 doing female figures really, really well. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates Power Rangers Wave 1 Yellow Ranger. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.